So the last video in this introductory series on linear regression is going to be how to generalize a little bit this idea of linear regression to polynomial regression. So if you go back to this example that we started with, in which we're trying to plot BMI, which is body mass index, versus body fat, we see this sort of nonlinear relationship. So we have some, we can introduce some ideas here in order to solve this. One idea would be transform the regression, you have luck. So imagine that this is actually a simply changing x by x squared. That could work. We could also create mock regressors, like for instance, changing x by a, by a new set of regressors with x1 equals x, x2 equals x squared. And the other thing that we can do is perform a truly polynomial regression. Okay, so let me show you an example. So let's create some mock data. So here x is a random number, which is almost positive. Remember that the random, the Gaussian distribution, 95% of the data is between minus 2 and 2. So if I add 2, this basically this is going to be positive. And I'm going to create this polynomial. So the first coefficient is minus 1, and the quadratic coefficient is 1.5. So let's take a look at the data. As you can see here, this is clearly a parabola. So what if we do a simple linear regression? You can see that, okay, this is not bad. R squared is pretty large, so this 85% of the variance of y is explained by x, and the coefficients are significant. So I would be happy with this idea. You can see, because we know the data, that there is something missing here, because the residual standard error is 1.7, and the noise that we have introduced with this function is 1. So the when you call this uh, our norm, you're generating a Gaussian distribution with one standard deviation. So basically, we are overestimating the noise, and this is because we are not doing the proper regression. But of course, in real life, we didn't know that. Let's take a look at the fit. Okay, and you can see that there's something wrong. So probably we are underestimating part of the graph here and overestimating here. So let's take a look at these plots. As you can, as I've always say, you have always have to check your regression. And of course, there is something clearly wrong here. So basically, this is an idea that maybe a parabola is a, a better fit than, than the linear regression. So let's do that. How can we do that? There are a couple of ways to do that. One way is very simple. Let's create a mock data, um, like a virtual variable x2, which is x squared. Okay, and now, Let's do a regression of y versus all the parameters. And you can see here that now we have an intercept, x and x squared. Okay, one interesting thing is that, and I'm going to discuss about that later, now x seems to be relevant, which is not true, because if you go back to our mock data set, you can see here that the coefficient should be minus 1, and it's pretty remarkable. But here you can say that, yeah, this is not true, okay? The other way we can do that is using this indicator function, this i comes from indicator, and now we're saying that y is a function of x and this indicator function of x squared. So basically this is the same as this thing here, but this is cheaper. And again, if you compare, we have the same conclusion, so the same parameters, the same correlations, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's take a look at the diagnostic plots, and here clearly we have improved a lot. There are still some outliers that are not fitting into the normal distribution of the residuals, but now the, this red line is almost horizontal, so basically this means that we are capturing all the information. Taking a look at the residual error, this is around 1, so I, I would be happy with this, with this uh, correlation. Okay. Now the question is, okay, actually, what if we don't know anything about the data? What if instead saying that we have uh, x squared, we have x cubed, and we want to do a cubic distribution? No problem, let's do another fit, and in this case we are going to do our regression between y and a linear contribution, a quadratic contribution, and a cubic contribution. This is interesting, now none of the parameters are significant, so you can see that we don't have any asterisk here, and we have a still more or less a, a comparable regression, so I would, it's hard to tell which one is better, because r squared is more, more or less the same in all of them. Again, if you take a look at the at the consistency checks, you can see that this is horizontal, we have the same outlier here, so we haven't seen any improvement with this cubic. So the question is, which one is better? And this goes back to the main topic of the course, uh, this variance versus bias uh, discussion. So a linear model has higher bias. Bias, remember, that means that we are trying to fit the reality in a simpler model. So the simplest thing that we can do is a linear regression, that's why a linear model is higher, it has higher bias. And a cubic model has potentially higher variance, meaning that maybe we're overfitting because a cubic model is somehow squiggly in between that line. 
If we take a look at the, at the prediction versus the data, clearly the linear regression is performing poorly, but I couldn't tell which one is better between the quadratic and the cubic. So how can we tell? Of course, the answer is, as usual, cross-validation. So I have created this function. It's a very simple function. Basically, I'm just taking the feed, taking from caret, and I'm doing our sample, and I'm plotting the mean value of R-square, the standard deviation of R-square, the mean value of the root mean square error, and the standard deviation. Okay? So let's compare the th different feeds. So feed 1 is this one, so we're plotting y versus x. Feed number 2 is the quadratic one. I'm using this indicator function of x squared. And feed number 3 is the cubic regression in which I'm trying to regress y versus x, x squared, and x cubed. Okay, so let's plot my summary for fit 1, and as you can see here, we see that the mean R squared is 0.87, not bad, and the standard deviation is 0.05. So that, that would mean that the R squared would be something, it really would be something between uh, 0.87 plus minus twice this one, so 0.97 and 0.77, so 0.77 is pretty low. What about the mean, the root mean square error? So you can see that it's pretty large, but also you have a lot of variance. What about the quadratic case? In this case, you can see that R squared, the mean value is the highest and the standard deviation is the lowest. This is related to the low variance stuff, okay? And what about the cubic? Again, R squared is almost, almost like this one, but you have more variance here. And also you have more variance also in the root mean square error. So overall, the quadratic one is the one which provides the lowest error and the lowest variance in the error and the highest correlation and the lowest variance in the correlation. So clearly the winner is this one. So in summary, the quadratic uh, fitting is the one who produces the lowest error, the highest R-square and the lowest variance.